Ladies and gentlemen, in politics, we learn daily. There are lessons that we learn based on what we see happening in the lives of other politicians or in our own lives, especially when we engage in politics. And uh, these lessons are things that we need to use to ensure that we don't uh, do the same mistakes that others did. My belief is that the Honorable Rigadi Gashago, having been in politics for very long, considering he was Uhuru Kenyatta's PA and Uhuru Kenyatta was, doing, uh, was running as a presidential candidate, he also served as a, an MP for Madeira and also was with William Ruto during the campaigns. My belief was that he used these particular moments and occasions to learn specific political lessons that he would have used now that he was the deputy president. However, I think he did not do that. And so in this particular video, I share the three fatal mistakes, the three unforgivable mistakes Rigadi made that has cost him not just the deputy president, but is likely to cost him his political career permanently. If that is a subject you are interested in, please stay tuned. And if you are watching for the first time, take a moment, subscribe to this channel. If you are also watching and you are yet to subscribe, I urge you to consider subscribing so that uh, you are notified whenever we produce new videos. Otherwise, let us jump into the subject of the day. Like I said, we are supposed to learn based on experiences of others and our own experiences. But whenever we fail to learn, we end up making fatal mistakes. And I call them fatal mistakes in that we can't recover from them. Or mistakes that you would call unforgivable in politics. The three mistakes uh, regarding Gashagwa made, in my opinion, number one would be he overestimated his value and power. Uh, you see, there is nothing wrong with feeling that you are powerful and feeling that you are valuable. It's all about self-esteem. So you are not supposed to look down upon yourself or beat yourself into something. However, you need to be very realistic. You need to know what exactly are you in a position to do? What powers do you wield? For instance, regarding Ashagwa, uh, believed somehow that by virtue of being elected on the same ticket as William Ruto, that made him equal to William Ruto. So he overestimated his power. He believed that he was as powerful, if not more, than William Ruto. And you see, when you find yourself in such situations, then you will not act. You will not lead your life carefully. You will be very blunt. You will be very brutal. After all, you are maybe the most powerful person in the country, politically speaking. And so you saw from the speeches regard they used to give, how he would warn people, how he would even say, I will be firing a uh, hundred uh, chiefs by the end of this year, uh, so and so will not come to state house, this particular people uh, you will have to reconsider. He, he was speaking as if he was the co-president or actually the real president. And uh, you've heard even in public when he gives his sentiments, Regardi doesn't speak as if he believes that uh, Ruto is superior to him. He is persuaded he's even more powerful, more uh, a better leader, uh, more vast, more liked by the people and other things. And so he overestimated his power. When the reality is he was still struggling to even wrestle Mount Kenya from uh, the likes of Ndindi Nyoro. You saw Regardi Gashagwa abandoning the national calling of a deputy president to go and fight to be a regional kingpin. That is not a powerful person. If you are still fighting to have your people behind you, that you have to go and now create fake stories and paint yourself as a victim and incite the community against the president for you to have some semblance of influence, you are not that powerful. 
That is not what power is. So in my opinion, uh, the Honorable Brigadier Gashagua overestimated his own value and power. He thought he was more powerful than he actually was. That is one mistake that is not forgivable because it led him to make series of other mistakes. It made him to look down upon his opponents. It made him to miscalculate. You would hear him with Mimi Siuziwi Oga, Mimi ni Mtoto wa Mau Mau, Kiki Kama Mbaya Mbaya, let them bring it on. So he overestimated his power and influence. The second mistake uh, Rigadi did, in my opinion, is to underestimate his opponents. You see, the first person Rigadi picked on as an opponent, even before he came and uh, started fighting President Ruto, was one Dindinyoro. Dindinyoro is not a very abrasive politician. Uh, he is popular, is known, but because of what he's doing using the CDF money. So people like Dindinyoro based on his ability to actually manage CDF well. He's not abrasive. He's not the type that is going to fight and, and make a lot of noise. But his principle, he speaks his mind. So when, when Rigadi saw people, uh, other politicians going to benchmark in Kiharu and in Inyoro getting invitation to go and launch even projects in uh, Bondo and some places in Rift Valley and even the coast, he saw this as an opponent that needed to be crushed. He underestimated Ndininyoro, uh, and this is why I believe he did. You see, his belief was he was going to fight Ndininyoro with everything he got. What he didn't know is that this perhaps was a trap by Ndininyoro for him. Because, ask yourself, when Rigade went with every machinery he had to crush Ndininyoro, Ndininyoro pulled out of this particular war with Rigade, but left Rigade so obsessed with Mount Kenya that he did not, he ended up being seen as a tribalist by the rest of Kenyans. So he was like, Ndininyoro, who is that? A, a, an MP just chairing the budget committee and I'm a deputy president of the republic. Oh, I will just go and incite the public against him, tell people that he is a ploy by William Ruto, that is being um, uh, propped by enemies of uh, our region. Of course, fine, he did that. Dininyoro pulled out. It's not like he crushed Dininyoro, no. Dininyoro pulled out. He did not fight back. There is no record of Dininyoro taking Rigadi head on. He could have. He didn't. He pulled out from this particular war, which exposed Rigadi. Because at the end of the day, people saw somebody who was so obsessed with controlling Kikuyus than leading the country. And so Rigadi lost. Majority of Kenyans who have different, who have negative sentiments against Rigadi didn't have this negative sentiment against Rigadi based on what his uh, business dealings are. It was based on how he tried as much as possible to endear himself to a region. Even saying if it was to cost him, let it be. So Dininyoro just left him. That is one opponent he really underestimated. But the worst mistake, the unforgivable mistake he made was to underestimate uh, the president of the republic, uh, uh, William Ruto. He believed that William Ruto, like I said, he believed William Ruto is a coward, is somebody that he will teach a lesson very soon, and really William Ruto will be kneeling uh, down before him. Even from his statements, you would be like, we are the ones who put you there. Uh, you would be a nobody without us. And so he looked down upon Ruto. He didn't see Ruto as a formidable challenger. In his mind, Rigade Gashagwa believed that uh, the fact that uh, he now had Mount Kenya behind him, he was invincible, untouchable, and other communities would start now seeking. The likes of Raila would now be going to, uh, to him to actually seek alliances. He underestimated Ruto, and that cost him badly. In a previous video that I've linked here, I said one lesson that Rigadi refused to learn from Ruto before replicating what he thought Ruto was doing is proper timing. William Ruto is a master schemer. He doesn't act until it is time to act. He is not going to go with emotions. He is not going to run into issues, jump into matters because it is necessary. No. 
is a master schemer. And that is why he outwitted Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila. That is a very serious force. That is a combined force of a sitting president coming from the richest family in the country with a seasonal policy, uh, a seasoned policy politician like Raila Odinga with a serious support base. And Ruto still outmaneuvered them to become president. So this is not your ordinary politician. And underestimating such a politician is a grave mistake. It's an unforgivable mistake. Regard didn't believe when he was being impeached by over uh, 282 MPs. He didn't believe that. That was historical. It was like, how is that even possible? Because remember, he was all over just stamping, doing the meet the people to among areas that Kikuis were, and he would be like, come and buy and buy one wakutane kwa parliament, etc. When he went there, he couldn't believe the level of dedication those MPs had to get him home. Even in Senate, over 53 people voted to send Rigadi home. That is. 80%, ladies and gentlemen. So he underestimated Ruto. He believed that because Ruto was quiet most of the time, even when he was arrogantly uh, saying all the things he was saying, the, the silence of Ruto was misconstrued as a weakness in his eyes, and they, he underestimated him. So that's the same way he went fighting Dindinoro without seeing that Dindinoro was trapping him. He decided to fight President Ruto, believing that the fact that President Ruto can't talk back means that Ruto feared him and was afraid of him. At the end, Ruto has not even spoken, but he is now crying that it is Ruto who is dealing with him. Ruto has not even spoken. He has not said even a single word about this particular impeachment. It is Rigade who told us that the MPs has, have tried to impeach him twice. And in those two scenarios, President Ruto called PGs, and in those PGs, he asked the MPs to drop the impeachment. But then Rigadi used that as a, as a sign that the reason as to why Ruto was talking to these people to drop the impeachment was because he feared Rigadi. He knew how wonderful, how powerful Rigadi Geshagwa is. And so in that case, what happens? He underestimates his opponent. And underestimating somebody like Ruto, ladies and gentlemen, in politics, especially in politics, of Kenya is a grave mistake. A grave mistake. I remember there was a time when uh, uh, Azimio, led by Raila, were leading serious demos. And then there was this burial in like Kipi, I think, of one of these um, uh, freedom fighters. And both Raila and Ruto were there. Initially, Ruto had said, enough is enough. We cannot allow our country to go through this. And so Raila, when he got a chance to speak, he said that uh, even the noise Ruto is making with the threat CTC, I know Ruto inside out. When Ruto got up to talk, what did he say? He said, Raila, you are right that you know me. But what people need to also know is that I also know you inside out. And I even know how to end this mandamanos. Within some months, there was no mandamano. And Raila was working with Ruto. So, this is somebody you can never underestimate in politics. You don't underestimate Ruto. Uhuru underestimated um, Ruto. He was like, mm, this is somebody we will just bring the media to paint him as dark as possible. We will uh, mistreat him here and there, cut his resources, ensure he's broke and other things. And of course, because we control both the media and the military and everything, Ruto is a done case. He was shocked when Ruto was now declared the president and the Supreme Court confirmed that. Uru was shocked. To the point that Uru would be heard saying, even though I'm going to hand over power, I believe Raila is my... That was the act of denial. Uh, that showed you how much Uhuru was shocked. He never believed that there was any way Ruto was going to win. In fact, Raila also never believed that Raila, that Raila Ruto would win against a combined force of uh, Raila Odinga and uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. But he won. That is the same person, Rigadi Gashagwa, in his mind, after doing the mistake of overestimating himself, went ahead to underestimate Ruto. And it has cost him. Rigadi Gashagwa has been impeached overwhelmingly. He is struggling in court today. 
but that one also cannot reinstate him back. Once the impeachment stands, Rigathi Gashagwa cannot vie and cannot be appointed. And you never know. Some people might want to go after him now with the criminal charges. You don't underestimate your opponent. It is number one rule of any combat or any war. You cannot go into an arena with an opponent and you look down upon them because that hubris makes you not be reasonable. You don't think logically when you are filled with hubris. And that is why you see Rigat Gashagwa was making one mistake over the other. Even when you thought that the gentleman was now supposed to shut up, he wouldn't. That is when he would call a press conference and he would do everything. Because he was always underestimating his opponent. Even Senate, even Parliament, uh, National Assembly, he looked at those as walkover. Even when he was handling the judiciary uh, the other day, he was there with his lawyers, openly intimidating the, the judges. To the point that the judges say, don't intimidate us. We are not here to be intimidated. You can't intimidate us. Why? Because he looks at his opponent as inferior. And you cannot do that. You can never look at your opponents as inferior. You will lose. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you. And regarding Ashagwa is serving as an example. The number three mistake was poor timing on the part of Rigadi Gashagwa. Let's say Rigadi believed that he deserves to be the future president of this country against what they had agreed with President Ruto. Let's say Rigadi Gashagwa believed that Mount Kenya should be treated better than any other region. Okay, he has his reasons. People can explain why they are doing what they are doing. Was two years in office the best time to do all this. Because if you wanted to bring Ruto down or to destroy Ruto, do you give him three years to re-strategize or do you do this at the end, tail end? If you want to rebel with Ruto, if you want to destroy Ruto and make sure he's a one-term president the way Rigadi has been promising, if the goal here is to ensure that at the end of the day, Kikuyus worship you and... Uh, you, you are their next candidate. Is this when to attack? Do you attack when you don't have the MPs behind you? You don't. Do you attack when you are still looking for sympathy from your region? Meaning you have not even become a national leader. Do you attack somebody like Ruto at that particular time? Do you go against the MPs at that particular time? This is the mistake Uhuru Kenyatta made. And Rigadi just copied it. Chapter by chapter. Verse by verse. Uhuru Kenyatta wanted to destroy William Ruto. He didn't want Ruto to become president. So what does he do? He brings in Raila Odinga. Of course he says that bringing in Raila Odinga has nothing to do with politics. Okay? But then the next thing that follows is he starts acting as if Ruto does not matter. So it's very obvious that he prefers Raila Odinga to William Ruto. As early as 2018, he was already obviously showing that he prefers Raila to Ruto. This gave Ruto a chance to reorganize himself. This gave Ruto a chance to move across the country and galvanize support. If Uhuru turned against Ruto in 2021, June, it would have been very difficult for Ruto to reorganize himself. Very difficult. So it was, it was very difficult because then Ruto would have now have to look for a political party, which Uhuru would have blocked everywhere. He would not get a party. And then Uhuru, have just, Uhuru would have just announced that Jubilee as a party was endorsing Raila Odinga. So what do you do? At that time, you are disoriented. It is too late. It's very difficult for you. But because of hubris, because of underestimating who Ruto is, Uhuru decided to attack that early. And that is what Rigadi Gashagwa was repeating here. I said chapter by chapter. He didn't even deviate a little bit. He attacked Ruto barely one year in office. He has already started fighting Ruto. So his timing was pathetic.
And it's unforgivable because once you give somebody like Ruto a room to re-strategize, you can't win. And that is what he has given Ruto. Because now Ruto has three years to re-strategize. Ruto will go, and I can assure you, Ruto will try everything possible to get Mount Kenya votes. For, forget the, the current um, uh, uh, emotional rants on social media, etc. When things cool, Ruto will go for Mount Kenya. Because what works for Ruto is he still has the MPs. And people always underestimate the significance of member of parliament. These people have support. They may not have the serious support you think of, but they have some support. They have grassroots people they can reach out to. An MP would have somebody strategically placed everywhere to tell them and give them information. And these are the people Ruto has. These are people who are willing to impeach one of their own to stand with Ruto. What makes you feel that they will not go out of their way to campaign for President Ruto in Mount Kenya? And there is very little regard they will do by then. What will he use to incite people again? He would be a nobody because people would be like, okay, fine, you are, in, you are saying we should not, but what do you, who do you want us to vote for? So you will be asking them to vote for Kalonzo. Fine, some of them will, but a good number will also say we stand with Ruto. So once you give Ruto, once you attack early, once you attack at the wrong time and you give Ruto a chance to go after you, I tell you, you are done. So these are the three mistakes that Rigadi made that has led him to where he is. Number one, just as a recap, he overestimated his power and influence. Number two, he underestimated his opponent or opponents. And number three, he attacked at the wrong time. His attack, his timing was pathetic. He was not prepared now. He didn't have the clout you need to attack somebody of Ruto's uh, magnitude, politically speaking. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what I wanted to point out. Let me know what your view on this subject is. If you think Rigadi did uh, very well and is progressing okay, uh, let me know in the comments below. If you agree with me that the gentleman made three unforgivable mistakes, also let me know in the comments below. I ask you that if you have not uh, subscribed, consider subscribing to the channel so that whenever we produce these videos, uh, you are getting notified. Uh, otherwise, allow me to take this moment to thank you for watching this video and let us meet in the next one.